dear Nikos, dear Mustafa, dear George, dear Mehmet Ali, uh, excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, friends, it's um, really, really nice to see you all here, uh, all friends, uh, many people with whom I worked uh, intensively, uh, almost uh, weekly or even daily. Some people I've met more sporadically, but all uh, very good friends. And I cannot express in strong enough wo words how happy am I to see you all here together with us tonight. I would not be honest if I didn't share with you that it's, it, it is with mixed feelings that I'm leaving Cyprus after almost exactly three years in this job. I think it would uh, have been an uh, even better party tonight if we were able to celebrate a, a recent breakthrough or a strategic agreement, but that's not how it turned out to be. But I want to say that uh, it's been a remarkable journey, and I have made many good friends, friends in high places, many of whom are here, and thank you very much for being here, friends in somewhat more normal places all over the country, Greek Cypriots, Turkish Cypriots, Maronites, uh, Armenians, uh, the Catholic community, and all the people who came to Cyprus and found it as a lovely place to live. I've really grown f fond of the country. It's a beautiful island. It's got beautiful people. It's got a rich culture, uh, rich cultures in plural, but also something uh, amazingly and uniquely Cypriot that connects all Cypriots and which honestly makes Cypriots, whether they're from the north or the south, different from most other people I know, and I say that with appreciation, and something that I've learned and I really, I really like uh, to take with me when I leave. Uh, it's just 40 days till we have elections in Norway. Those elections are fixed, but I was not able to move them. Um, and uh, I think it's about time I show up if I expect anybody to remember me there as well. Uh, so uh, this is the natural moment for me. But in a somewhat unfortunate way, it's also a natural moment given that uh, things happen as they did over this summer. I've been criticized for many things, and some of those are quite usual. And, uh, you know, we in the UN, we know that part of the job is being criticized. As a general rule, we actually prefer to take the criticism to us than to have sides criticizing each other, because, I mean, we can always take it. Take it. One of the things that's been stuck with me is that I was supposedly such an optimist. I was even accused of being a hope monger was one of the newspapers I spent is such a hope monger. That was a bad thing. I'm sorry. Um, maybe I was too optimistic. But I also think that um, uh, you do not necessarily want a pessimist in this job because there is pessimism enough to go around that if you add it from the UN side, you might not last very long. So I think that a, a dosis of that, a healthy dosis, is probably OK. But of course, you need to be an optimist and a realist at the same time. And uh, the degree of realism has, of course, grown. Uh, over the years that I've been here. Two of my best friends are Limassolians. Uh, they are uh, the leaders, uh, Nikos and uh, Mustafa, and I've learned to know them and appreciate them very much as leaders of their two communities. And I've learned from you, Nikos, and from you, Mustafa, a lot about the people you represent. And one of the things I've learned is that things that might look easy to outsiders are not so easy to insiders not because we outsiders are smarter in any way, but simply because there's so much meaning embodied in even in things that have been there for so many years that it's, it takes some time to really grasp the depth of the meaning that is embedded in concepts and words and ideas. And I think it's important for those of us who are here to be the humble servants and try to help to learn about this. And I've learned a lot from you both and from all the other people I've been working with. And it's been an amazing time also, uh, such a privilege to get to know uh, Mr. Östil Nami, you're there, uh, Andreas Mavrianis, they're appropriately together here, and their brilliant teams. I at least I've seen uh, IPEC, I've seen uh, uh, Melina, I've seen Polly, I think Sertach is here, uh, Meltem. Uh, if there's somebody I'm not mentioning, it's just because I don't see you coming in, but all those people who have been so instrumental and have done such a great job. 100 and 54 negotiators, formal negotiators meetings, that excluding the sessions in Switzerland, excluding all the informality and the more, the dinners and the more private stuff, 154, every single one with a structure and agenda. Some of them making great progress, some of them making no progress. But even when we made no progress, 
we almost always parted with an idea that we could make progress the next time. Uh, we negotiated, did a lot of the job. The leaders, 70 meetings, 70. Just reflect on that. These people have day jobs. Eh? These people don't only do this. But over those last 17, um, 27 months, the leaders of the two communities have met 70 times in formally prepared meetings trying to solve the problems. Well, we did not. Okay, we know. But I want to say that despite of in, in no way trying to hide my um, disappointment with the fact that we didn't get, get to where I hoped we would be getting while I was here and while we were doing this, um, a lot of things did happen. We were jointly aiming, and, and I, the reason I mention this is not to say, oh, it's too bad we didn't get there. It's more to say there's a platform to build on if, if ever a new uh, attempt is being made. And I don't know, it will be without me, but it will be probably later rather than sooner. But there was a serious effort from everybody involved, and I can testify to that, to create a genuine federal solution in Cyprus, a genuine federal united Cyprus, modern democratic federal in, in the true meaning of the word. It was a genuine united sense that we needed a truly European settlement, which was genuinely European in all these aspects, that it was economically viable, that we did what I think we did quite well, we all of us, I'm not saying we the UN, but the leaders and the people who supported us and the European Union and the international financial institutions, the World Bank, the IMF, the European uh, Central Bank, the uh, uh, European Bank of Reconstruction and Development, the European Social Bank, all these entities that were in actively involved on, on a weekly basis and with whom we had very frequent video conferences or real meetings, all of them contributing to thinking about the economic viability the, the, a fiscal federalist system that would deliver uh, a rational, modern decision-making on the economic front. A functional state and a secure state. And we did invest in thinking about a new security concept that would alleviate the concerns and worries that has been built through history, whether it's 63 or 74 or any other moment in history, in such a way that, uh, to use uh, Mustafa's word, that the security of one community would not come to the detriment of the security of the other, but at the same time, both communities could feel secure and the country as a whole could feel secure together. This was in the making, and that's not bad. That's actually quite a serious ambition that was shared. And I want to use also this opportunity, having mentioned uh, the leaders and the negotiators and, and not the least the excellent negotiating teams, also to mention the people in the technical committees, the people in the working groups, but also the diplomatic community, uh, the, uh, the organizations I already mentioned, and those I may not have mentioned, the Council of Europe should be mentioned as well. Uh, I said the EU, but as the Commission, it's the Parliament, it's the Council, it's the ECB. All of these institutions were here trying to help. And the rest of my, because I'm, I, although I'm leaving Cyprus now, I, still, I will still be engaged in, in writing the report, and we will try to record as best as we can all that was achieved in a way that's respectful of what has been confidential and so on, of course, as I agreed with both leaders today, but in such a way that it is not lost for future endeavors. It's also been fun. Uh, and don't misunderstand it. It's been hard work, serious work, not always easy. I think you all know that. But we also had our many good moments, and there's been a lot of humor. I, uh, there's a lot of humor, a lot of cultural things. I, would, I, I remember so vividly the Otello Tower, uh, uh, which... Uh, where, where are you, Andrula and others were organizing um, the, uh, the, many, the many events like that. But also all the stuff you haven't heard about, which I will now reveal uh, from the inside of the talks. And I'll just take two examples, which I think I will, they will let me get away with. One was when we had the relatively informal discussion about what could be the anthem of the federal states. And uh, to our big surprise, uh, one leader who used to be in a boys' choir I won't mention names, he's more on the southern side. He uh, <laughs> started actually singing what he thought would be the new anthem. Uh, I'm not sure if it was registered as a formal proposal, but he was a good singer and we were quite impressed and we had fun. And at another moment where uh, some jokes were being exchanged and just before these jokes, we had agreed on a two to one ratio in certain governmental bodies. And after uh, Nikos having shared one joke, uh, which I will not repeat, um, uh, then uh, he said, uh, uh, normal, uh, as would be normal practice, that now it would be Mustafa's 
time to tell a joke, but he said, no, it's two to one. You have to do two jokes before <laughs> there's a Turkish Cypriot joke. So, so some of that was also part of it, and I take also these memories uh, uh, with me as we move uh, forward. Um, a little sort of one minute of seriousness. I'm reflecting, of course, now, and I had good meetings today with both leaders, and I met with a lot of people starting to think about what can I say that we could have done differently, and some of those things are better said later. But uh, two things I want to share, and I also shared it to the public through the media. One is that I think we have to think through, or you, who will continue this at some time, think through if it's possible to have such a degree of secrecy over so much time. Because I think, you know, you could have a short process which is close to the public, uh, or you could have a long process which is transparent to the public, but long and secret is difficult because they're all people who will leak or pretend that they leak or pretend that they know something, which is most of the time wrong, but that makes all the people who are dedicated to destroy the work of the leaders uh, will give their upper hand because they can just say what they think is true and the rest of us cannot say what is true. So that's something to reflect about. And I also want to say, I will say with deep appreciation, all the people from civil society, broadly defined, that's of course the NGO, the peace community, but it also includes the business community, the trade unions, um, other parties, uh, you know, society at large, uh, religious leaders. Uh, they were there, um, and, thank, and I thank them for that, but maybe a little late, and a little more, a little earlier, would probably have been better, because you need leadership, but you also need people who encourage and support the process. So that's a couple of the things that I will take with me. This is, of course, my own view. I'm not saying it on any other else's behalf, but that's the view that I have and that we have uh, in, um, in, the, in the UN. Uh, coming to an end, I want to say that the Secretary General conveys uh, that the United Nations, and I'm quoting him, the role of the United Nations is to be a facilitator, and we will always be at the disposal of the parties willing to come to an agreement. So the UN does not give up on Cyprus, uh, but the UN, of course, needs to know that there is a process in Cyprus, and there is a process, and that has to be, I, I have said for three years consistently, uh, that this process can only be owned by the Cypriots, it can only be leader-led, there is no way the UN tried the alternative route in, uh, in, in uh, 2004 in the Annan plan, that failed, as we know, so we've been adamant, and I, I think that is still true. Uh, but the UN uh, will remain at the disposal of the Cypriots, but it's up to the Cypriots to decide what to do next. That's why the SG Secretary General Antonio Guterres also said that we need a reflection period, and I know that this is now what is going on in both communities, and I wish you luck and all the best in that reflection period. Then I want to say, uh, last but not least, that I have had the immense pleasure of working with a wonderful team I, I, I sincerely think, I, and this is really true, it's not the politeness that, for a trained diplomat, it's actually from my heart. I don't think there is such a good and uh, qualified and united uh, UN team anywhere else. Of course, also, UNFISIP by all means, and all that Elizabeth represents, but I'm now principally talking about my own team, the good officers team. A small team, very dedicated, excellent people, uh, political scientists, lawyers, uh, economists, uh, uh, experts on all the different fields that we're working on who are different people but who really manage to grow together and to, which I think has, you know, more than myself, has been really in their daily work, less visible but really the, a fantastic job in, 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 in supporting this process and not the least over these 27 months. So I've been here longer but 27 months is the time from the first dinner right here two meters from where I stand, where uh, Nikos and Mustafa met first, not first in their life, but first time in their current capacities, till uh, that early sad morning in Kramontana where the Secretary General concluded that the Conference of Cyprus is over. That was 27 months, most of them very rich, and I want to thank my team. And then, as I'm leaving, I've learned a lot, probably not enough, I will constantly reflect on what I could have done differently, and that I think is an example to follow, because I think everybody should. Uh, and I think if anybody who thinks that everybody else but me is to blame are normally wrong, uh, so uh, I will not start by saying that I think we could have done, uh, we all could have done things differently. But I have not learned or seen or observed anything that suggests that the idea is wrong. 
I, I remain, I leave very, very confident that the best solution in Cyprus is a united federal Cyprus in line with the European principle, bisonal, bicommunal. These are the UN parameters. I believe in them. We, the UN, at least, believe in the UN parameters. Uh, if nothing else, nobody else does, but I'm also happy to say that it's my sense that that's also true for the communities. So I still would say things are difficult, make no mistake. They're not easy right now. Uh, but I would not give up hope and I would not give up on the dream because it's a nice dream and it's a good dream and it can be done. And thank you very much for the attention tonight and also thank you very much for all the support you have lended my team and I and even more importantly the leaders in their serious endeavor over these years. Thank you very much and cheers.